Over the Garden Wall, Chapter 4, Songs of the Dark Lantern. <laughs> I keep, oh god, I keep messing up, hang on. Once again, we're covering some DVD commentary, this commentary coming from Nick Cross and Patrick McHale. Off top, they had said something really interesting, to me at least. Because Pendleton Ward had boarded most of this, and so they said this episode has this different kind of punch. <coughs> that the rest of the series doesn't have. And number one, it's funny because if you keep up with the DVD commentary shit, it's like Pendleton Ward on DVD commentaries uses the word punch a lot to describe, you know, oh, let's add something to this scene to punch it up. But while I was watching this episode, the first scene coughed me, ugh, coughed me. My throat fucked up right now and that shit was on my mind. And my stomach growled, this should be so chaotic sometimes. But while I was watching the opening sequence, I was like, this feels different. And it got a little chuckle out of me. And not different in a better way per se, just different while simultaneously still being good. So now that kind of makes more sense. Then they talk about this scene. We wanted it to look sort of weird and out of place and kind of creepy. And a lot of old cartoons, they would film someone dancing and they would rotoscope them. And cause they were traced off of live action, the models were sort of weirdly proportioned compared to the other characters. So we tried to emulate that a little bit, which means it's a lot more work. He doesn't follow the actual model of the character and we have to animate him using 24 frames instead of 12 to make it look like it's almost from live action. So I volunteered myself to do it. And then Nick Cross joked it. Uh, <laughs> I'm so fucking goofy. I had to pause and think about some shit. So some shit was on my mind and then I got flustered and started stuttering over takes again. Okay, but we locked in now. Okay, so Nick Cross joked that Patrick McHale manipulated him into doing it and was like, who could animate this? Who could do it? And he was who? Then the exchange continues with, it was nice on this show because I like to do stuff on my own. I like to make my own films and things like that. So it was nice on this show that we could sort of hold stuff back and just do it ourselves. It felt felt more like we were doing our own little film or something as opposed to an actual production through a major studio on a major network. No one was looking over our shoulder too much. There was a lot of faith and support throughout the show and it needed it because we didn't have a lot of time to get it done for the quality we wanted it to have. And so the network and all the people that worked on it were so supportive. It wasn't a lot of arguing about anything. It was more just trying to get it done. Then they close off this last exchange with, it felt like we were almost getting away with something because we were in this office making all these elaborate paintings. It's kind of irresponsible if you're actually working in TV because you have to make it doable. So it has to be fairly simplified, but no one was pushing us to do that from the artistic end at least. And honestly, shit like that's just really nice to hear because you have so many stories where networks and shit, you know, try to stick their hands in it too much and then end up fucking up the whole vibe, bruh. The whole feng shui or whatever the fuck niggas say. My bad, if you hear a shower right running in the background, but that's life, nigga. Then Nick Cross talks about some of his first experiences being welcomed onto the show or being propositioned to work on it. When I was asked to paint backgrounds at that time for a Cartoon Network pilot, they didn't say what it was. I was just thinking it had a totally different look in mind. I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that. Then they sent Chris's backgrounds and they were so beautifully drawn, all shady, looked like a classic old illustration. And I was like, I really have to step it up. So I just painted it as elaborately as I could. Then after that, I had to come on and do the whole series. Then about this horse nigga. When we were recording Fred's horse, Fred came in to record and he had recorded on his phone like, horse sounds that he was practicing. He was like, I don't know if I can do horse sounds. And he was playing me these things he recorded in a restaurant. And I was like, that's perfect for this particular horse. I was fumbling over my words. I'm just going to keep that in. Then lastly, they talked about how with the beast, it was hard to make him not too dark but then still not show much, like in the most literal lighting sense. Cause on top of, you know, just trying to figure out the right balance, it varies on different monitors and all that. And like I said, I didn't know this until they brought it up um, in one of the other DVD commentaries. Yeah, a lot of this show is very dark, like literally just dark. Okay, but that was pretty much it. And there's a lot of noise, so let me get up out. I love you, thank you for watching. You mean the world to me. Feel free to let me know how your day is going, good, bad, happy, or sad. I do read it. Even if you're not, I hope you're taking yourself seriously and all that. Links to the social media and the Discord in the comment section below and description. Stay safe. Learn to love yourself. Take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, or whatever else, my nigga. Have a good one. I'm about. Peace out. Love you. Bye.